Hello and welcome to Success Mantra. Today we are going to look at the whole unit of value education according to UGC syllabus. I have divided the whole unit into small topics. Now I do have the entire list of the topics in the description box. If you are looking for that particular topic then you can check that and click on the right timing. Let's get into the video. So the first topic which we are going to look at is environment and ecological balance. Now environment. What is environment? We are very familiar to this word environment from our childhood till now. It can be defined as a place where both the living organisms as well as the non-living components exist. It also includes physical, chemical and other natural forces and changes. In other words, it can also be defined as the sum total of conditions in which an organism has to live or maintain its life process. Now, there are three types of environment. Natural environment, industrial environment and social environment. The natural environment includes water, light, land, air and all organisms that live in nature. The industrial environment consists of villages, factories, cities and all humans and the third social environment includes authorities, universities, schools, companies and other establishments along with their output, legal and communication process. Now we come to ecological balance but before moving into the topic we should know that what ecology is. Ecology can be defined as the study of how organisms interact with each other in their environment. All organisms must interact with both living as well as non-living things that surround them for ecological balance. Ecological balance is a term used to describe the equilibrium between living organisms such as human beings, plants and animals as well as their environment. That is the place where they live. This balance is very much important because it ensures the survival, existence and the stability of the environment. Now we come to the second topic, interdependence of all beings, living and non-living. So what are living organisms? Living organisms include human beings, plants, trees, animals, birds, bacteria, insects, lichens. The non-living components can be sunlight, temperature, water, air, wind, rocks and soil. Organisms interact with the living and non-living things in their ecosystem to survive. The living things in an ecosystem are interdependent. This means that the living things depend on other living organisms or non-living organisms either directly or indirectly for their survival. Take for example the food chain. There are three stages in a food chain. The producers, the consumers and the decomposers. The plants and the green trees take the place of producers. The animals and human beings take the role of consumers. The bacteria and lichens take the place of decomposers. Further, when we divide the consumers, we could divide them as herbivorous, carnivorous or omnivorous. The animals that eat only plants are known as herbivores and the animals that eat only meat are called as carnivores whereas the animals which eat both plants and animals are termed as omnivores. Now we will discuss in detail about how the interdependence takes place. The plants who are the producers use the abiotic components in the environment such as air, water and sunlight for the preparation of food by the process of photosynthesis. Now the consumers either directly or indirectly depend on these plants for their food. And this is how the interdependence of living and non-living beings takes place. Now we move on to the next topic, the binding of man and nature. So just think, will there be any living creature in this universe without nature? The answer is no. Everything is connected to everything, from the smallest microorganism to the largest animal. Man has been in relation to his surroundings since ancient times. But nowadays due to the development we have stopped interacting with the nature. We have been disconnected from nature. It had been years walking bare feet on the soft grass getting vitamin D from natural sun rays instead of capsules. These days uncontrolled urbanizations and the loss of green space have become the main cause for global warming especially the climate change. 
but today we have a new trend to connect humans and nature to slow down global warming which is called the biophilia design biophilia design is an innovative way of designing the places where we live work and learn it is an extension of natural life incorporating natural materials light plants and other natural world experiences in contemporary architectural surroundings it is not only bringing the outside in but also creating a strong relationship between many aspects of nature and our living space now we'll look the last topic environmental conservation and enrichment environmental conservation is basically the practice of humans to save environment from collapsing such as loss of species ecosystems due to pollutions and human activities now the question comes why is it important to conserve environment the most obvious reason for conservation is to protect wildlife and promote biodiversity protecting wildlife and preserving it for future generations also means that the animals we love don't become a distant memory and we can maintain a healthy and functional ecosystem now what are the types of environmental conservation there are animal conservation marine conservation and human conservation so here are some of the simple ways to help environment use reusable bags print as little as necessary recycle use a reusable beverage container don't throw your notes away save electricity save water save nature and nature will save you it is not yours not mine it's ours so protect your mother who nourishes you